Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining part one of our four-part Transformation 2015 webinar series today. My name is Sarah Pastro, and I'm here with AIS Media CEO and founder Thomas Harpointner, who will be hosting this exciting webinar titled Top Digital Marketing Trends in 2015. Here at AIS Media, we focus on providing lift to amplify brand awareness, customer engagement, and conversion rates, all the while deliver, delivering meaningful, measurable results. We have two locations, Atlanta and Dallas. In Atlanta, we focus on digital marketing strategies, user experience design, lead generation and online sales programs, digital marketing, SEO, PPC, email, and conversion rate optimization. In Dallas, we focus on CRM, marketing automation, sales process alignment, content journey mapping, and lead management. We've worked with hundreds of clients, ranging from leading companies, top brands, to Fortune 500 corporations. Over the years, our creative team has been recognized with dozens of awards. Our content, such as what you're, we're about to share with you today, has been featured on and in the global press and news, including Fox Business, CNBC, The Wall Street Journal, CNN Radio, and many others. At AAS Media, our core competencies are strategy, web design, content marketing, search marketing, social media marketing, email marketing, customer relationship management and marketing automation, and analytics. Throughout our series, we're going to be covering a variety of digital marketing topics. Today, we'll focus on the top digital marketing trends to help you prepare for 2015. Here's your presenter, Thomas Harpointner. Well, thank you, Sarah, and good morning to everybody. We have a uh, fantastic audience here today. And um, to kick off the year, this is most definitely one of my favorite topics um, because it's not just clients, but everyone is interested in trends and uh, what's to come. So we have had a fantastic time putting this presentation together for you all today. And uh, we will make the presentation available via webcast if you'd like to revisit it. it um, so you don't have to uh, you know, worry about writing too many of these uh, details down. You'll be able to check it out on our blog. Uh, it'll be live in just a couple of days. So um, I hope this adds some value to your organization as well. To, uh, you know, first of all, to kick it off, um, you know, people are, of course, uh, first and foremost interested um, in how budgets are shifting among top marketers, both you know, brands, nonprofits, um, you know, large companies are constantly rejiggering how to allocate funds. And you know, one thing to be mindful of, um, you know, this is a slide we've used in our many of our presentations from last year, but it's extremely relevant today. Um, you know, the in essence, the you know, from my perspective anyway, the mobile revolution is pretty much over. Um, you know, it's no longer a question of if more you know, consumers are going to be accessing the internet through mobile devices or desktop. That has already happened. Um, you know, in fact, it happened in 2013. So, uh, you know, it's really a matter of you know asking yourself and considering how to use this data and how to apply it to your marketing strategy and your marketing budget. So here are some insights in terms of how budgets are actually shifting in 2015. Um, you know, this data, uh, you know, was derived from e-consultancy who did quite a bit of work in assembling it. Um, so if there's, you know, if I'd like to do a little bit of a deeper dive, you can search for, for this data online and, and get the full report. But in essence, um, you know, a great deal of budgets are being shifted to mobile. And you know, content marketing, you know, in particular is receiving a great deal of attention. Of course, content spans across you know, mobile, desktop, uh, you know, even uh, internet-enabled TV devices now. So mobile content, uh, mobile content marketing, display ads, and email, you know, continue to receive a uh, huge bulk of the marketing budgets. You know, although uh, search optimization is still very important today, it's no longer just a standalone effort. It's a more of an integrated approach. So we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive into that. Um, you know, as far as social media goes, uh, organizations are still putting heavy focus on social media, of course, but the uh, but the expectations have been realigned. The social media is a great place to create brand awareness, but not always a great place to drive immediate conversions. And we'll explore that in a moment. Um, 
you know, from a from a marketing and a design standpoint, um, of course, it is important to think of mobile first, but also not mobile only. You know, by that I mean that many users today, if you think about your your own habits, um, you probably have more than one screen. You know, in your in your life, there's the mobile phone, but often you may check email on a mobile phone, then revisit that uh, that email on a separate device. Uh, many consumers today are browsing the web while they're watching television, and you know, to take that into consideration means that the the, the type of content that um, gets shared or gets viewed has to take those not just the mobile devices into consideration but also the user's intent in terms of what they're looking for based on the type of device that they're on so it's uh, you know you've got a multi uh, device multitasking user they you don't have their undivided attention in many cases um, one thing to take into consideration is of course uh, when we're all on the go you know as consumers uh, we don't have the patience, and we also don't have the bandwidth. So, uh, the worst, the worst mobile experiences are those that happen very slowly. Um, we don't have a whole lot of patience, you know. And of course, we are on the go. So, 60% of mobile users expect sites to load in three seconds or less. Uh, they're just not. It's not just that they're impatient. They don't have the luxury of being able to wait. So, if a site doesn't load very quickly, or the message in an email doesn't come across to them very quickly. They don't have a lot of choice but to move on, so we need to take that into consideration in terms of how content is created. Sixty-seven percent of users are more likely to make a purchase off of a website that's mobile friendly. Well, sure, um, and you know I would say thirty to forty percent simply won't because they can't. Uh, if it's not mobile friendly, if it doesn't load very quickly, they couldn't buy if they wanted to. Um, you know, we've all been in that situation where, uh, you know, we're browsing a website, we're trying to find something to buy or a store to go buy it from, and, and we simply can't get there. So they don't leave us much of a choice but to look elsewhere. Um, so it's the, the impatient and the low, uh, low bandwidth user that has to really be taken into consideration. And if a, if a website and a strategy is built with that type of customer in mind first, it's, all, it's much easier to add to the website or add additional complexities than uh, to take away when it comes to website development. Some interesting uh, figures from our friends at Google, uh, you know, again, a uh, mobile-friendly website, of course, 67% of people are more likely to buy, um, but also if it's not friendly, you well, know, 61% simply don't see what they're looking for, so you're literally forcing the customer to your competition if they don't have a good experience. Um, yeah, and by experience, of course, it, it's not just the type of content, but also how the content is displayed, right? Um, you know, if a website is, if, if links on a, on a website are difficult to click with the finger because the buttons are too small or the fonts are, you know, written for um, people on a 27-inch 27, 27 screen, it makes it very difficult. Uh, you know, in marketing, of course, we call that friction, and friction is never good when it comes to getting sales. So um, now larger buttons, easier navigation menus, um, you know, pictures that are clickable, uh, you know, all of those come into play. And those are, you know, just a few of the items that our team takes into consideration when developing a mobile friendly website. An example, um, yeah, we'll, we'll plug one of our clients here. It's, uh, you know, one of the dairy associations, um, Southeast Dairy is out of Atlanta. Um, and they picked up uh, a few, uh, awards for email marketing, and we're recognized for an award for design for for this particular site. Um, but you know, here's the here's the you know big takeaway. Um, you know, focusing on mobile first isn't necessarily uh, a, a breakthrough. Um, you know, necessary you know, for for 2015 anyway. But at the same time, while a lot of designers are focused on making things look good on small screens, they're also forgetting that a lot of users today you know, really still like those very big screens. In fact, desktop computer screens are getting bigger, the, you know, with the new iMacs and the 4,000K 4, 4, or 4K resolution desktop displays. Um, you know, some of us do have more real estate, particularly at the office or um, in our home office for, you know, small businesses. Uh, so if, if there is a larger screen, by all means, let's take advantage of that additional real estate. Um, 
you know, if you're marketing to baby boomers, chances are uh, they have to have a large screen with larger fonts because their eyes aren't as sharp as they were when they were 18. So, um, you know, screens are still getting smaller, and it doesn't end with these four screens. But you know, if you go to your local Best Buy and look at televisions, if you're in a market for a new TV, there's a good chance that television is going to be internet enabled, and um, we're seeing an increasing number of consumers that are interacting with websites and um, you know, online content on their big screen right in their living room. So when there's more screen uh, resolution, more screen size available, by all means, let's take advantage of that. Some key takeaways are, of course, 48% consumers feel they, uh, when they feel frustrated and annoyed when uh, they get to a site that's not immediately mobile friendly. 36% said that uh, they feel like they've wasted their time by visiting those sites. Uh, that's never a good thing. Um, if, you know, if you're a big brand or you're you're focusing a lot of your marketing budget on uh, brand awareness. Uh, this, I mean, this would be a, a critical pitfall when somebody, uh, you have a customer who's beginning to becoming acquainted with your brand. Uh, they have a bad experience and suddenly feel like they've wasted their time. There's a good chance they're not going to come back again. 52% um, said that a bad mobile experience made them less likely to engage with the company. You know, again, not because uh, they don't want to. Uh, in many cases because they're simply not able to engage, no matter how hard they try. If they can't find the phone number or the, the contact page or if they can't find a store location, uh, they can't engage or buy even if they wanted to. 48% uh, said that if the site didn't work well on their smartphones, it made them feel like the company didn't care about their business. So um, they're, they're not just blaming IT people. They, they simply feel like the company doesn't care about them. If, um, if they don't have a good mobile experience. So, um, you know, companies spend, brands spend a lot of money building their brand to convey that they, you know, they have a, a, an honest voice that cares. And if the site's not compatible, if, you know, consumers are relating that to the lack of caring. Um, I think that's a new one, right? Um, now, let's, let's talk just a little bit about data. Um, you know, we have a couple of other webinars coming up in the series, uh, so I'd encourage you to go back to our website and register for those if, if you're finding this content valuable to you, where we'll do a deeper dive in some of these other topics. But for today, I wanted to simply share, um, you know, how we're approaching uh, many of uh, marketing campaigns. While, um, you know, a lot of kudos still go to the creative teams who come up with the great visuals and the, and the navigation and, and to provide a customer a great user experience. But you know, at the end of the day, even before we start inviting the creative team to join in a new project, um, we look at data. You know, we look at analytics. We look at how well a site converts. We look at the response rates to email campaigns. Uh, we use tools like heat maps that get overlaid on websites to figure out specifically where existing users are clicking, where they're not clicking, what's actually happening. And, uh, and then we share that data with the creative team so they can use the science to uh, create a great experience. So they, they love it because it's less guesswork. <clears throat> and, and clients love it because they can feel more confident in their decisions in terms of which creative, creative direction to go into. Um, so taking this type of data-driven approach to both design and marketing uh, leaves a lot less to gut instinct and um, a lot less time is wasted on discussions and debates about feelings. Um, and it's, you know, it, it, it just creates a better customer experience um, for our clients and a better um, agency client relationship for us. If we're looking, you know, if we let the science drive the art, then the other way around. Um, real time, you know, marketing is, uh, you know, something that's becoming a, a, a reality. We're, we're getting there. It's not going to be perfect in 2015. However, it's, uh, it's getting a lot better. Um, and, and I like to think we're, we're contributing a lot to this effort. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a matter of putting the right message in front of the right audience, you know, at the right time. And when it's done properly, magic almost happens. So timely, Content. I, you know, thinking of a personal experience around Christmas time. I was, you know, I was shopping online. Uh, Christmas Eve, uh, 
and I almost put this slide in here, and uh, and, and then we deleted it because <laughs> I, did, I didn't want to call them out. Um, I didn't want to be ugly in this presentation. But uh, I won't mention the, the company name, but I'll just mention the uh, scenario. Christmas Eve, around 9, you know, 9 10, 9 15, we're at home, you know, decorating the tree, and I get this mobile alert uh, from a local retailer, um, you know, prompting me to come in for their, uh, you know, their last minute sales. And uh, from, uh, from, my, from where I live in, in Atlanta, I could l literally look across the street and see this retailer, and I could tell. That their lights were off. <laughs> they had closed down for the holidays. It was, you know, just a little bit after nine on Christmas Eve. And uh, even if I wanted to pick up, take advantage of the last-minute deal, I couldn't. So by timely, um, obviously that was a fail. And, and again, I was tempted to put that in here. I didn't today. Um, but something to be mindful of. Uh, you know, I've shopped there before, so I'll shop there again. But if this were one of my earlier experiences, I'd say, you know, who's out of touch here? This is bad timing. Did the technology fail? Did the, the, the you know, the marketing team fail? Something went wrong. Um, but you know, bad timing for them. Uh, the content was relevant, and I even wanted, I would have taken advantage of the offer. Um, they were accurate in targeting me. Again, the message came came to me on my mobile device, so you know, there was an uh, you know prior relationship there. So relevancy and accuracy is important, but man, if you drop the, if you get the timing part wrong, um, you know, if the message goes out after the sale um, or after the store is closed, then you know, it's it's a, uh, you know, it's a lost cause. So mobile versus uh, local search volume forecast, um, you know, we we know that tablets and mobile devices have already uh, surpassed desktop PCs as far as usage goes. But search volume, uh, you know, how, how, what, what people are searching for is also, of course, exceeding. Now, if you take into consideration that they're probably not all searching for the same stuff on a mobile device. If you're on the go, you're searching for contact information and store locations, addresses, and so forth. Um, but that's going to continue to grow. And by mobile, we don't just mean the handheld, um, but you know, also the tablets. Uh, yeah, Laptops, which you know are easily you know, easy to take with you, so um, it it reasons it you know stands to reason that as the search volume continues to increase, the opportunities that come with that also increase, um, and you know we ought to adjust our budgets accordingly. Uh, so, needless to say, <clears throat> as, you, as you might expect, the mobile search ad spending is increasing. Uh, marketers are realizing that these customers are in fact on the go, so we're going to put more money to reach them. And um, with that, we go to content marketing. And 58% of B2B marketers plan to increase their content marketing budgets in 2015. That's a great idea. Now, you know, content isn't just text. They're not just hiring more copywriters, but they're also hiring designers, um, creative teams, uh, videos, are of course, all part of content, infographics. It all falls into the content mix. Um, so we're going to see a lot more from that. And instead of just creating the content, there's a greater focus to amplifying that content. You know, many brands have good creative teams and copywriters on house, but they need help getting that content out effectively. Um, you know, we call that amplification. Um, because if you, great, you create a great piece of content and it's not amplified properly, it's like a great magic trick in the dark. It never happened. So, uh, you know, content, search, and social media really all go hand in hand. And social media, is of course a fantastic channel to amplify content. And with proper social media amplification will also come higher search rankings. So content convergence. Um, we said be timely, be relevant, and be accurate. Um, and by converging those three channels, we accomplish all of those above. Organizational goals for B2B content marketing haven't really shifted much from last year. Um, you know, as the economy recovers, there's a greater focus on building brand awareness and building the top line than simply maximizing uh, the ROI from every single dollar spent. Of course, that's still important, but uh, you know, as, as consumers are starting to spend, we have a greater opportunity to create brand awareness and marketers are taking advantage of it. Um, Right behind that, though, is lead generation. You know, we don't want just uh, awareness. We want to get leads. 
uh, from our money. Percentage of B2B marketers who have a content strategy in place, um, well, this number is surprising, but you know, to many of our clients when we share it, but it, it is accurate. Uh, many of them have some kind of a, a strategy in place, but it's not well documented. There isn't a great plan in place in terms of how the strategy will be executed throughout the year. And again, while many of our clients have content teams in-house, many of them are coming to us to help them create the strategy because you know whether you're a marketing team of two or 20, it's very difficult to see the trees from the forest. It's you know it's once been said the last creature on the planet to discover water is likely the fish, you know, because he's swimming in it. So um, you know creating this documented content strategy uh, is you know part of many many of our engagements these days. How the how the money is being spent? Well, it's not going to change too much in in 2015. There'll be a slight, uh, you know, there'll be, there'll be a slight increase among uh, about you know nine ten percent of marketers, um, or a significant increase rather, just a, a regular you know, a regular increase, 46 percent, 32. We'll keep the budget about the same, but very few in 2015 are going to decrease spending on content marketing because, you know, if if you want to be found, you need the content to get there. The, so we created this um, this journey map. Um, I can't mention a client. It was a big telco that we worked with last year on on this type of engagement, and they have tons of content. You know everything that you can imagine, from videos to white papers and case studies. But the revelation in our content strategy engagement was um, how their customers are consuming this content. Um, you know, it really depends on what stage of the buying process they're in. You know, if you think about it, pictures and videos and visuals are the easiest things for our mind to consume. So it stands to reason that that type of content should go in the front um, of the sales funnel. But as the customer becomes more aware and they're starting to narrow down their choices between vendors or products, uh, they're looking for a different type of content um, or different types. And as they're getting close to their decision, now they tend to drill much deeper. They take more time to read white papers and, and, and guides and case studies. Uh, so why is this so important? Well, if, you know, if you're putting the case studies and the white papers and all the heavy content in the beginning, um, there's a good chance that customers will simply reject it because they don't have enough interest or time to consume that content yet. So this is a little different for every organization and company, um, you know, of course, Everyone has different types of content, and you know, once once we perform a, a content audit, then we create a similar custom map to figure out how to best use it. So, social media, as you might and have anticipated, uh, is evolving, you know, yet again. But the difference here, um, one highlight for 2015 is uh, the growth in social commerce. It still represents a small part of all e-commerce. Only about 5% of all online sales uh, come from social media. You know, companies like Amazon and the big retailers, they, they're, they're continuing to promote, uh, you know, their stores and they're continuing to um, share offers with their customers. But it's still a very small percentage of overall e-commerce. We're, we're going to see it grow, um, but don't expect half of your online sales to come from you know, just Facebook ads. Otherwise, you'll be very disappointed. Um, however, social media does drive uh, awareness and it does help uh, propel sales. Um, usually, it takes a, a couple of weeks for those effects to become evident, but um, it should be part of the awareness and uh, awareness building efforts and help um, you know accelerate the customer journey. Seventy percent, seventy percent of marketers have had success. Um, you know, from engaging customers in these social networks. So um, they're going to continue to invest in that. Social advertising, okay, uh, is a way to cut through the clutter. Uh, because Facebook and Twitter, um, you know, even, even now Instagram, they're, they're all rolling out, you know, their paid advertising models. But, you know, as Facebook um, has recognized that consumers are, you know, they're, they're less likely to engage with any one piece of content if they're just overwhelmed with too much of it. 
Um, they were simply saying to brands, look, you know, if you want to be found, you're going to have to pay up. Um, you know, getting your content, uh, you know, your promotions found for free, um, that's, that's going away. So they're starting to look more like Google, where, yes, there's a lot of consumable content on Facebook, um, but these offers and promotions and sales um, are going to take some money to, to, to get in front of, you know, a target audience. So marketers are, of course, responding. Um, you know, initially, you know, that may not have been so well received by everyone, but they're, they figured it out. Look, if, if, we, if we spend money to get our offers in front of our customers, then uh, let's make sure these are good, relevant offers, and let's make sure they're timely um, to make sure they work. So money on paid social media ads will definitely increase in 2015. However, there's also, for, uh, related to search, there's a threat to, uh, to organic search marketing. Uh, you, you know, Google has said that it takes about nine months for if a company has been targeted by, a, by an evil competitor who creates, you know, links and uh, negative brand content, it takes a long time to recover from an from an SEO attack from a uh, competitor. So, you know, something that you should take into consideration on a regular basis is a you know a search audit to see where you rank, where you don't rank, and um, you know how many links are pointing to your website because you may be surprised to find that many of these links you may not have created or be aware of. And uh, you know, Google doesn't like black hat tactics. So even if you've been wonderful and, and only using white hat SEO tactics, um, I, um, you know, a not so nice competitor um, who would love your page one rankings um, may have employed a strategy to get you pushed down by making your brand look bad. Um, so, so, you know, take negative SEO threats into consideration. So, uh, you know, a big, a big shift in 2015 are brand mentions and citations. You know, in other words, we've, you know, as Sarah pointed out earlier, you know, our content's been featured in the press and media over the years, but very rarely, um, you know, will big media outlets like the Wall Street Journal put live links back to, you know, a, a website because obviously they want to keep traffic uh, um, where they want it, where it make, makes sense for them, and that's on their website. So in the past, if, if uh, links didn't point back to a website, then, you know, Google didn't really, um, you know, give that recipient a whole lot of credit. Well, that has changed. So brand mentions and citations, if even in the absence of hyperlinks, uh, will help increase online brand awareness and help increase online uh, or increase uh, organic search rankings. So that's a big breakthrough um, for PR teams. So, you know, take that into consideration. If Inc. does a little write-up on your company, even without that hyperlink, it's going to help increase your your search rankings. And uh, you know, following the failed Google authorship experiment, what we're going to see in 2015 is more value on these social signals. So the content that's published on Twitter and Facebook, uh, places like LinkedIn and uh, uh, you know even Instagram, is going to help ra raise your uh, organic search rankings if you go about it the right way. So these social signals are finally helping um, social media teams demonstrate real measurable ROI from their efforts. However, it also for, for, uh, it's forcing those social media teams to make sure that that content is well planned, that it's well executed, and that the proper tools are in place uh, to measure it. And uh, that's, that's an area that we're seeing requests for help on. Um, so, you know, with that, I'll, I'll leave this topic today. Um, this is a great place to introduce the, uh, the next series in our, uh, or the, uh, the next uh, three webinars in our series. Uh, next one up on February 11th is the new content marketing blueprint. We'll do a much deeper dive uh, than we did today into um, what's happening with content marketing and how to adjust your strategy accordingly. The mobile first digital marketing event is going to be a very exciting one. It's uh, happening on March 4th, and then uh, the shift for SEO success will happen on March the 25th. So if you uh, enjoyed our, uh, this event today, 
I encourage you to sign up online right now before you forget so that these events make it onto your, your calendar. And we'll send you a, a couple of email invites uh, between now and then. Um, and I'd, I'd like to invite you to share those invites with your, with your peers. Learning is more fun when you do it with your colleagues. And um, uh, you know, take this information you know, both into your, uh, your strategy sessions and um, your daily activities. Um, so with that, uh, thank you all for uh, attending. And uh, you know, look for an email which uh, invites you to share your comments via a short survey for us. Thank you very much, and have a productive rest of the week.